In this video, I'm gonna be sharing my journey that I had with Dan Pena, the $50 billion man. And um, this is behind the scenes footage, again, in our Elite Mastermind that we did here in Dubai very recently. And it was quite in depth around uh, mindset and the actual uh, personal growth that I went through and the transformation that I went through over the probably over the last five years or so uh, in particular. And I was studying all of the mentors that have taught me over the years. As some of you know, I've spent uh, almost a half a million dollars in uh, probably over that now in terms of uh, masterminds, programs, courses and uh, personal mentors that work with me one on one. And I would say, looking back on who's impacted me the most, yes, a lot of have taught me different things, different strategies, um, different mindset stuff, and uh, helped me with growth. But I would definitely say the one that's made the most impact subconsciously in my mindset would have been uh, Dan Pena. And uh, yeah, he's very polarizing, for, for sure. Uh, but it was an amazing experience. I spent eight days at that castle seminar, and uh, I was very tempted to go back very recently for the hardcore seminar because part of 2024's plan is uh, to start rolling up some companies and, and buying and acquiring through acquisition because uh, now I've got to eight figures I, to get to nine figures uh, obviously I've got my software company launching very very soon and I'll keep you posted on that but uh, I like business I just love business and I, and I want to start acquiring more companies and putting my skill set and my my leadership team skill set into um other companies and seeing if we can improve their sales processes, their marketing processes and some automation and systems. So I'm going to share with you a, um, a clip, uh, like I said, behind the scenes in, in our mastermind. And it's all around like having an abundance mentality and some of the key things that I learned uh, from Dan. So I hope you enjoy it. And I'll catch you soon. So this session is the billion dollar mindset. So you probably heard me talk a lot about mindset and uh, again, like the more financially successful I get, the more I realize it is 80% mindset. And um, so basically what I did, I, I spent the last few days just thinking well, what I'm going to show uh, the people in the room different to what I've maybe taught in the past and uh, help them unblock getting towards being a millionaire. And because um, I'm like, well, I've, I've given every single thing, tactic, tool, strategy, access to my team, every single thing that you could get. So I'll give you the recipe, um, but it's up to you guys to be able to produce the cake or whatever it is uh, for your business. And I think a lot of the things that are holding you back is definitely gonna be mindset. And basically what I did, I, I look back over the years, I, I've spent definitely close to half a million dollars in uh, mentors, probably more now, I would say probably 750K. So even the mentor I've got now, I'm probably paying 100K a year too. And um, so like whether it's courses, whether it was books, whether it was masterminds, whether it was one-on-one -on -one coaches, um, I've really boiled down to everyone that I learned from and coming back to where I am now and I was reviewing that, probably the most impactful mentor I've had up until this date um, is who I'm going to share with you on these slides. So a lot of the inspiration of the uh, training that I'm going to share with you comes originates from um, him and everything that I've learned. And basically, I've tried to take down a lot of his teachings into what I think is relevant for you guys in the room and to scale a recruitment agency. Um, and this is a guy called uh, Dan Pena. So this was one of my previous mentors. Uh, they call him the $50 billion man, or he calls himself the trillion dollar man now, uh, just because of, he says, the impacts that he's made on people's lives and the amount of revenue that's generated for uh, the business moguls that he's, he's trained. And um, yeah, so this was me uh, back in 2018. So this was me five years ago. I actually, I went to the castle, I'll, I'll show you, um, at the start of the, the week with a beard and then he told me to shave it off. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually shaved it off on the last day and um, then I looked yo even younger again. And uh, yeah, that was a really impactful experience for me. It was eight days in a castle in Scotland and uh, I paid like 20,000 pounds at the time. So back then, 2018, I was like probably one and a half, two years in my agency. So it was still like a bit of chunk. And um, yeah, so there was like 25 entrepreneurs from around the world, but these guys were all different. So I was the only person from England. Um, everyone else was from all over the place all different walks of life, a lot of older people than me and everything else. 
And it was really intense. So we would start at 7 a.m. Uh, for breakfast, start in the classroom uh, for 8 a.m. And it was literally 8 till 8 p.m. dinner. Then we had homework. So we'd study like Steve Jobs, all of the greats, um, and then back the next day. So it was quite what we call an uh, MBA stroke business boot camp. But basically, he was just calling us a cunt like every 10 seconds. <laughs> So it was just like abusive, but it, it still resonates with me now because it works. Like he said, he doesn't want to be liked. He just wants, because he hasn't done his job right. Like he was trying to cut through all of this limited belief that we had, all of the poison that we've had from our parents growing up in terms of the mindset side. Um, and it's really resonated with me and I've come full circle back to thinking, uh, I might go back to his castle again. He's got like a, an intense one um, that he might do. Um, just because it, it, when I look at all of the traits that I've got now, a lot of the, the traits that have stood the test of time, it's not like a tactic or tool online or anything else. It was like a lot of it was like mindset. So he's probably, he says he's one of the last alpha male type of business influence coaches in the world. And um, yeah, I would say that was true. Like meeting him in person, I was like actually shitting myself. Like he, he's got the presence, like a Donald Trump style person where you actually felt that aura. Um, he's the one where I got, I've, I said it on a couple of Q&As before, where um, he says, like, there's no such thing as a stupid question. He says, there fucking is, so don't ask one. Um, so everyone was scared of asking a question because he would just make you feel stupid. Um, so yeah, so this was his castle. Uh, obviously, you had to wear dress, dress for success, as he says. So I was always wearing three-piece suit every single day, uh, turning up to the seminar. And yeah, we were just in a classroom like this. So sat there taking notes and um, yeah, so basically what I'm going to be doing is just sharing with you like the wisdom, wisdom that I've learned uh, from Dan over uh, that period and what is still instilled in me that I want to instill in you. And the number one thing is to be all you can be. Uh, one thing I'm really passionate about and in the future is like I want to inspire more entrepreneurs to be successful and not to leave everything on the table and I think there's a lot of you that have, you've all shown up you've you flew to Dubai yeah you've invested in yourself in this mastermind but you're all definitely not achieving like even a tenth of what you could really achieve in life uh, whether that's fear holding back or you're thinking life's getting in its way um, it's very important that we need to get past that show me your friends I will show you your future you see like you are the average of the five people you hang around with most that's why the mastermind is very important that's why I'm putting on the yacht I'm trying to get like some good people on the yacht as well so you're in in the right environment because you need to look at who you're hanging around with so the people that I hang around with are probably a lot different than the people that you hang around with um, and that's been from my move to Dubai like all my friends are multimillionaires. like and not to be, unless someone else has got some sort of thing that I want to learn from, whether it's something else in life, like they have a good family man or raising kids, if they're not ultra successful, I have not got time for them. Because it's contagious. So if someone's not successful and not making money, you don't want to be around them. 85% of your financial success is due to your personality, very true, and ability to communicate, negotiate, and lead. Shockingly, only 15% is due to technical knowledge. That was from uh, Andrew Carnegie. So like what I was saying before, 80% is mindset, 85% is success, success is personality. I look at that of like all of the clients I won uh, for my agency and uh, back in the day was all my personality. Like maybe some people like me, some people don't, but I was sort of likable and, and I could adjust to a client and they wanted to be around me. They wanted to learn from me. Uh, I would share a lot of like things I learned from books, from seminars, etc. that would meet on the golf course. It's very important you get your personality across and uh, to be able to communicate and lead. So leading by example, because if you can't lead a team and grow your team, you're never going to be successful. No matter what technical knowledge you have or what I give you technically, you need to be able to lead and be able to have the personality for that as well. And if you do not think about the future, you cannot have one. So uh, that's why I did that little task with you there, even just writing down your goal for next year. If like, how many hires you need to make, how much money you need to make and or want to make and how much profit you want to make. If you're not writing that down or thinking about the future all of the time, you cannot have one. So sometimes life gets in its way and maybe you're thinking about life too much and other personal circumstances as opposed to just a vision all of the time. Like I'm just always about more like how can I make more money and how can I start this business? How can I make bigger impact? Very, very important you think about your future. 
So from the book Think and Grow Rich, who's read that book? Again, like half the room. Okay, cool. One book I would definitely recommend uh, reading. Every single mentor I've had has always said, I call it the 16 laws of success. So I get the original bigger version because they've trimmed down the Think and Grow Rich one now and they've took on key elements. They talk about, I was talking about recipe before, they've took on secret parts of the recipe that um, you need to get. So make sure you get 16 law of success, laws of success by Napoleon Hill. 20 pages into the book, if you truly desire money so keenly that you desire is an obsession, you will have no difficulty in convincing yourself that you will acquire it. I've always had an obsession about money. Even now, even now I've got, I would say like a lot of money, I still want more. And uh, it's not, money's not a bad thing. Like money is the only thing that you can get measured. And it's the only thing you can make an impact on other people and the world and your family. So let's get into the mindset of being greedy about money because money is good. The object is to want money and to be so determined to have it that you convince yourself that you will have it. You may as well know right here that you can never have riches in great quantities unless you work yourself into a white heat of desire for money and actually believe that you will possess it. Very, very important slide that you need to take account of. Like We need to be really hungry for the money every single day. All people are self-made, only the successful admit it. So I always say I'm self-made, yeah? But when you're not really successful, you won't, you won't say you're self-made. You'll blame your parents, you'll blame your upbringing, you'll blame, blame something that went wrong, you'll blame your health. You'll, there's always an excuse, you see, with non-successful people. Every successful person that I've met has always admitted that they're self-made. If they've been successful uh, but inherited money, they'll never say they're self-made and they're never going to last with the money. They're going to burn the money to the ground. So whether you're successful or not, it's your fault. So a task that I want you to do, homework anyways, make a list of the seven days of the people that you've spent time with. So over the last seven days, maybe come back to this tomorrow um, and compare the two. So like... When you've got your list of goals and when we finish with your list of goals by tomorrow, are you hanging around with the people that have achieved your goals or wanting to achieve the same goals? Because if not, you need to cut them out. It's very, very important. Um, because how many of those people you, you spend time with are actually helping you achieve your dream? So you need, sometimes need to be ruthless and 2024 is a great time to start your year fresh with cutting some friendship groups. Maybe spending less time with certain family members are negative. Number one reason people fail in life is because they listen to their friends and family. So true. Even when I started my business, I was trying to get my family involved, or ask advice, etc. And I realized that it's just, it's just not the way. They have no clue. Unless they're multimillionaires, just don't listen to a word they say about business. Don't even share your business like with them. It's a waste of time. Because it's, it's the words that they're telling your brain is registering, like it's going into your subconscious mind without you even realizing it. So you don't even want to be around that. And everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing themselves. So for you to make a bigger impact on the world or whatever you want to do, or human rights, whatever it is, like you need to change yourself first. 